Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Braley, distinguished members of the subcommittee, it's a great privilege to be here today to represent the 9,400 soldiers and airmen of the Iowa National Guard in this important discussion. Thank you for the opportunity to testify on this topic and to provide you with a perspective on the state of Iowa's initiatives to address this important issue. First, let me begin by saying that Iowa is unique in many ways. Thankfully, our state and region currently have lower unemployment rates than those seen in other parts of the country. The employers in our state are military and veteran friendly, and we enjoy incredible support from our business and communities. The level of cooperation between our employment and education partners includes the, the employer support for the Guard and Reserve, the Iowa Workforce Development, Job Connections Education Program, the Iowa Department of Labor, community colleges or universities, and the Society of Human Resource Managers is outstanding. In addition, Governor Branstad has provided key leadership to drive employment opportunities for our National Guard members. While we remain focused on those with unemployment challenges, we are fortunate to have seen tremendous improvements in our overall unemployment numbers from those who have returned from the state's largest deployment since World War II. We currently estimate, based on data collected during our deployment pro out processing and our reintegration events, that the unemployment rate of our returning warriors fell from a high of 25% when they returned in August of 2011 to now a current rate of just under 10%. Though we still have a lot of work to do, the unemployment rate in Iowa is at about 5.8. We're happy to see that we are making a remarkable improvement among our returning warriors. I truly believe the success that we've seen in this area is in a result of the steps that we took long before the 2,800 members of our brigade combat team deployed to Afghanistan. Through a series of lunch and learns engagements, town hall meetings, pre-deployment meetings, and briefings, and other public engagements, we initiated an information awareness campaign to build support and to deepen the understanding between the service members and employers regarding the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Act, or USERA. In conjunction with ESGR, we initiated a series of employer boss lifts, bringing our employers to our annual training sites and our post-deployment training locations to witness firsthand the importance and the complex work that their citizen soldiers were doing in preparation to deploy overseas. I invited Dick Rue, our state ESGR chair, to stand with me to help answer questions about the rights and responsibilities of both the employers and the citizen soldiers during our press conferences when we announced the 2nd Brigade deployment. In Iowa, we know that employers also sacrifice with their citizen soldiers when they deploy. And we work very hard to acknowledge this through our ESGR engagements and our employer recognition events. Opening up our toolbox, we started looking at ESGR, the National Guard Bureau, and other state and federal employment programs designed to assist our returning warriors. One of the most important steps that we took was to nest our employment and our education counselors in order to emphasize these areas during the demobilization process. Working together, they counseled returning warriors on employment and education programs and benefits available to assist with the transition from their active duty time. Thanks to the integration, an additional 900 of our returning, returning warriors indicated their intent to enroll in school and higher education uh, than that were prior to, prior to deploying. We screened members as they have out process, and we attended all the yellow ribbon reintegration events to identify those that were still struggling with employment issues and to link them up with assistance. Working with our employment partners, we developed a one-day course designed to assist our unemployed or under, underemployed warriors. We helped them write resumes, cover letters that transition their military experience into a meaningful civilian skills. Through our uh, partnership with the Iowa Workforce Development, we place computer kiosks in our armories to assist our warriors with finding and applying for job openings. Last October, we supported with other state and federal agencies a veterans job fair and began posting job openings, targeting veterans on websites like the National Guard's Jobs Connection, Education Program, and Employer Partnership. While we still have a lot to do to ensure employment opportunities for all of our returning warriors, we are making significant progress. We'll continue to work to enhance our toolkit to help our warriors, like working with our state legislature, to assist with legislation that better aligns the state license, licensure requirements with the military specialty skills and working with our employment and private, 
sector partners to continue to identify job opportunities for our warriors. Our Iowa National Guard soldiers and airmen continue to be mission focused and warrior ready. Over 14, 15,000 Iowa National Guard members have served and sacrificed in support of the ongoing contingency operations here at home and across the world, many on multiple occasions. They, along with their families and employers, have borne a heavy burden to help ensure that our nation's safety is in security. They did so willingly and asked little in return. Working together at every level, we have a responsibility to assist those struggling with unemployment issues related to their military service. I greatly appreciate the subcommittee's work on this issue, and I look forward to your questions on our efforts to help our returning warriors. Thank you. And I got sworn in on January 4th of 2007 as a new member of Congress. During that period, the Iowa National Guard, as Major General Orr has testified, was in the middle of the longest single combat deployment of any unit in Iraq. And I remember so well on Sunday night before Memorial Day that year, 60 Minutes devoted an entire program to something called Fathers, Sons, and Brothers, tracing a two-year period of sacrifice by the Iowa National Guard. And it was an extraordinary thing for 60 Minutes to devote a whole hour to one subject, and it won an Emmy. And we forget what an extraordinary burden we have placed on our Guard and Reserve units. And I think if you look at the opening of that program, it really captures why we're here today. This is how that program started. Rarely has our country asked citizen soldiers to shoulder so much of the burden of war. One third of the troops fighting our National Guard and Reserve, more than 400,000 soldiers called away from their civilian lives. And those numbers, as we know, have grown dramatically since then. So one of the things I want to hear from all of you is what lessons we've learned in this last 150 years about how we address this problem. And you talked, Major General Orr, about boss lift, and I had the great um, pleasure of going to Camp Shelby in Mississippi with that one of those boss lifts. And it was extraordinary to see the reactions of some of those employers who the first time were getting to experience what so many of their employees had spent so much of their lives preparing to do. So I'd be interested in your thoughts about how we have opportunities to shape the perceptions of employers to bridge this gap of employability that we're here today to talk about. Congressman Bradley, I, I think uh, we give this great thought because this is uh, one of a couple challenges that we constantly deal with as adjutants generals. You know, I, I would tell you, I think the programs that we have, and I look and speak from the state of Iowa, I, I think we have the programs that we need. It's the outreach that we have to continue to do, and I think, you know, I look at back at the model we learned over the last 10 years uh, of, of a lot of experiences in, in this last deployment. Uh, I think looking at the combat teams that had gone before us is what, what do we have to do in our state to ensure that we don't experience the 32% that Vermont had, you know, and others have had before us, and knowing that the conditions are different in each state. I think uh, what we've been able to do is the partnership is probably the greatest lesson learned is to be able to sit the federal, the state, the local, the community, the business, and the National Guard down and address this early on from the deployment perspective before we ever send a soldier or an airman and say, what is it that we need to do as a state to collectively support these men and women? And granted, you know, there's still going to be gaps at the end of this, but what we're finding is, is that business and industry, a great example is the, the principal corporation, financial corporation in Iowa. They uh, recently, two weeks ago, hosted a program called Hire a Heroes Program on their own. An ESGR recipient of the Department of the Army's award, Secretary of Defense's award, felt like they needed to give back. They have challenged now over 68 chambers of commerce in the state of Iowa to go out and to hire veterans. They've put up $60,000 and to put a video out to ensure that the word has. So I think the lesson learned for us is it's continued communication, collaboration, and, and that we have to take the existing programs that we have and we need to make them work. And we have to connect that with our soldiers and airmen every chance that we get.